Hello guys, so recently the channel has crossed 500 subscribers mark. I just wanted to say thanks. I'm glad you came along, partner. And I decided to make a small project to kind of celebrate it. Uh, in this video I will show you how I rendered it inside of Unreal Engine using virtual animation textures, as well as how to solve this type of intersections where two balloons intersect with each other. So I will start with the geometry shape itself. So it starts with a font node. Uh, where I have type 500. Then I use the poly extrude to add thickness. Then to add candies, first of all, we need to scatter points. And I have used for each connected piece a loop to iterate over individual geometry, like so, and scatter points using points from volume. And uh, I have uh, play around with the point separation and point jitter to randomize points placement. After that, to add candies, I have also added uh, another for each loop, but this time it's a uh, for each point loop. Uh, what I'm doing here is basically I'm scattering this sphere which is which has a small uniform scale and the frequency of three and I'm basically copying to every single point from these points then i'm randomizing a sphere and the way i have done it is by creating a spare parameters inside of this transform soap so i have added these parameters um, basically by drag and dropping it from here so i have added a minimum and maximum for all of the axes for x y and z as well as the seed value. And uh, what I'm doing next is pretty easy and uh, repeats everywhere. So what I'm doing here is, uh, first of all, uh, I'm accessing the iteration number from the for each loop. And to do it, uh, you can add a spire input here under this transform node. And uh, you need to drag and drop this for each begin metadata node to here. And if you don't have this node, highlight this from uh, for each begin node and Click on this create metadata node and you will have this node. And uh, with this node, we can access the iteration value from, uh, from this for each loop. And uh, this is what we are doing here. And the uh, iteration value stores the detail attribute. This, this is the reason why detail function is used here. Then I, I'm adding seed value. And then I randomize iteration number plus seed value. And then I'm remapping this value between minimum maximum values which in this case is 0.3 and 1 and the same thing i'm doing here and i have also used these expressions to center the pivot of the sphere by using these expressions then i'm converting the sphere into vdb with this voxel size you need to play around with it and then i have used the attribute color adjust to randomize colors and I have also added uh, three additional parameters to randomize R and G and B channels. And I'm using this seed in this adjustment value tab under the const constant color. Uh, I'm doing pr pretty much the same thing here. I'm accessing the iteration number from the Spire input under the attribute color adjust. And then I'm randomizing this iteration number plus the seed value. And so this is the result. And if I randomize, now we have slightly different values here. Uh, after that, I have also converted this geometry to the VDB using VDB from polygons and I have used this voxel size then I used the VDB smooth to, uh, to give this kind of bevel effect then I have added the attribute color adjust and I have set the operation type to set initial this color after that I have used the VDB combine to union candies with this shape and this is the result and uh, to transfer color from VDB to polygons uh, I have merged the main geometry with the candies first of all and after that I have transferred this data using VDB convert and the VDB convert uh, I have changed the convert to polygons and also I have checked transfer surface details but uh, this is uh, not ideal because colors looks uh, like crap in this like, type of areas where I where color intersect between uh, other color. I'm not quite sure how to solve it and the way I have done it uh, is by adding an att attribute blur to the color attribute and I have played around with these values. This uh, kind of worked for me but uh, for the close-up it's not ideal and I'm still exploring how to properly do it in a more elegant way. And if you know how to do it I would appreciate your experience. It will be great to know how to do it properly. Uh, after that I have added the normal uh, poly reduced reduce the amount of polygons, then placed on, on top of the world origin, then I removed every attribute and group except of color and normal, promoted a point color to vertex color, and I have cached it and added a null to reference it. Next, uh, to create balloon, uh, you can use a simple sphere. I have created this type of sphere, which uh, looks like an egg. Uh, I have placed it into the world origin, then I used the attribute wrangle to select the bottom point, which is this one, like here, where rope will be attached to and to do it you can use a bounding box to get the minimal of the bounding box which in this case somewhere here and uh, in this expression we are checking if point position in y direction which is 
uh, is located in the minimum bounding box of this from here. So the bounding box minimum will be somewhere here, and we are checking uh, the minimum, the top, bottom point in the y axis uh, here somewhere. If this point in this bounding box, we are adding this point to this group. After that, I have added an all to reference in the simulation. And uh, to create simulation itself, uh, first of all, we need to prepare balloons. And I have used an object merge by drag and dropping it to the object one input. And I have used the connectivity. Connectivity is used to randomize color. And under the color, we need to change the color type to random from attribute and to specify this class attribute, which comes from the connectivity, this one. And you can play around with the C to randomize color. And I moved it slightly up. Next, to scatter points in the geometry uh, where balloons will be attached. So, for example, we want to attach balloons here, so they will fly somewhere here. Uh, and to do it, first of all, we need to use an object merge to reference this geometry. And to select the uh, top points here from the geometry, we can use bounding box group. And uh, you need to change the group type to points. And the group name will be $OS, which is basically a an old name, which is this one. And uh, under the base group, I, I check option and then using the keep bar normals and keep in bounding region as well as the keep bar random chance. What I'm doing here is that uh, first of all, I'm using the bounding box expression. And uh, this bounding box expression will, first of all, we want to get the bounding box of the incoming geometry, which in this case is zero, this one. And we want to get the maximum width, let's say, of the in, in the x axis of this uh, incoming geometry, which in this case, this geometry, not this axis. It will be like so in this axis. And then we want to do the same but in the z axis. And we want to get the y size, which is this case here. And uh, we want to center this bounding box and move it up. And I'm also selecting points which are facing in the y axis. So not somewhere here or here, only in, in the y axis. And the way to do it is by changing direction to one here instead of default one will be here in the z axis and i'm also random, randomly add points into the group with this keep by random chance we can change the global seal here as well as the percent here then i blast those points by specifying this group name then i removed all of the attributes which i don't need color normal and name then i have added a id attribute using attribute create and then i named it as id type integer and the value will be point number of every single point and uh, this is needed to connect connect wire so for example balloon will be placed here and the, this point is located here and we need somehow to connect wire between balloon and this point and this id will, uh, will be used to do it then i'm randomizing color of the each of each balloon then i'm randomizing p scale attribute using attribute color float and i'm using operation to set initial pass inside random and then using the minimum and maximum values and i'm also using the outliers and uh, by default it was like so and i decided to use the outliers to, to add bigger balloons okay, playing with the seed value so this is randomization of the color then i'm randomizing then i'm randomizing position of balloons as in point jitter, which is basically the same thing, but then I decided to use it anyway. And uh, using the orient to change the orientation of the columns, but it's not really needed, but I decided to use it anyways. Something like that. And then I'm copying balloon geometry, and this uh, actually color could be not used. And I'm copying this balloon geometry to this point. And uh, next is to remove intersections. And so to remove intersections, uh, like this uh, i have used a for each connected piece loop and uh, you need to also add another begin block and you need to specify the block path to be exactly the same as uh, in the main for for each begin node by copy pasting it and uh, this block begin needs to be a fetch feedback and uh, block end gather method is set to feedback each iteration uh, and so to remove intersections you need to use uh, this intersection analysis analysis node and uh, into the first input you need to plug this for each begin node and uh, into the second input this fetch feedback input node you can actually leave this output uh, not, not attached to any other node as we will be referencing it inside of the switch node so to remove intersections so you need to first of all plug this for each begin node into the switch and uh, the second input of the switch will be this now basically not to display the balloon 
in this little expression we are checking if there are any points detected by this intersection analysis node we are selecting this switch node to the value of one which will basically not return any geometry otherwise if there are no overlaps we'll select this incoming geometry and this is how you can use it and then we are need to merge whatever comes from this switch node with the previous iteration of the loop and uh, i will link a video about uh, this topic in more detail about how, how to do this intersection analysis so you may get better understanding from after that i'm deleting id and grouping balloons and the, the reason i deleted my ideas is because uh, there will be some uh, conflicts uh, with the building solver to create ropes uh, i'm first of all deleting balloon pins uh, which comes from which comes from this uh, balloon node uh, under the attribute wrangle and i'm merging basically uh, grouped points from the geometry uh, as well as the uh, balloon pin points from this balloon geometry which also look at here so i'm merging them and to create ropes i will be using the id attribute which was created here and this will basically create a line between this point and somewhere here and so to do it uh, add the polygons by group you need to change the add to by attribute and then specify the attribute name and then i have resampled it and as you can see some of the points uh, remains not connected is because of the intersection analysis node i haven't removed them so i don't have any logic to do it then i'm also deleting id grouping these ropes then i'm selecting bottom and top pins so this will be this will be used for the in the volume solver so the bottom points will be attached to the geometry and the top points will be attached to the balloon and, and to do it uh, you can use a pure u attribute which comes from the resample node and you, you can check it here so here i'm selecting the zero which will be the last point the top point and the, the one will be the bottom point here and next uh, is a volume simulation so uh, for the balloons uh, i'm using volume configure balloon and uh, this is the settings i have uh, i'm not i won't be explaining what the setting does because i'm not a volume expert by any means uh, i'm not sure how all of most of it works but this is the stiffness settings i have and i guess uh, i only change this stiffness value here and under the volume pressure i have also changed the, the stiffness value here and then everything else is the same then i'm packing this geometry and merging with uh, these ropes which uh, and ropes is made from the volume volume, volume hair constraints and uh, the mass is set to calculate varying and the density is like so and uh, for the pin points i have selected the string ground ground pin which will, which will make sure that uh, this rope won't fly away and it will be attached to the ground and i can play around with the stiffness here also dumping ratio and the stiffness on the band and this uh, density value will basically tell us how strong the rope will be so you need to play around with this value uh, then i'm also packing this geometry and merging it together and then i'm unpacking this geometry and i'm using a volume stitch and uh, i have changed uh, the group name to points and i have selected this balloon group which will basically uh, connect string to the balloon itself and under the tar target geometry i have changed the tar target group to points and the target group to balloon pin which is the bottom point here so it will select uh, the top point of the rope with the bottom point of the uh, of the balloon and it will stitch them together and that's pretty much it and then i have used the volume solver and this is the result and under the volume solver i have changed the smoothing iterations to 15 added a ground plane just in case increase the memory cache and add the two sub steps and uh, I have also referenced the geometry uh, and plugged it into the collision geometry. And uh, I have used the uh, volume IO to cache it out. And to create a geometry for all ropes, I have used the uh, split, selected a balloon group. So in the right output, 
Zara will be ropes only and I have used a sweep node to add some polygons and I have changed the surface shape to round cube. But as you can see, here are some weird kind of artifacts and you can clean it with a clean soap and it will basically remove them. Now we have only this geometry and here I'm only keeping a normal color and UVs, the same thing for the balloons. And then I'm adding normals for balloons as well as the ropes and the merging everything together. Then I'm caching the entire simulation. And this one is very specific to the virtual virtual animation textures. And so the reason I have used every time node is basically to speed up the simulation by using a two value and this is speed parameter. And this is done to reduce the image size. Then I'm added uh, output null uh, to reference uh, in the when rendering virtual animation texture. And this is just to preview it. And uh, so to render the virtual animation texture, you need to either go to the uh, out context and you can create a rock network here and dive in inside, but I haven't done it. So I will go to the out context and, and you need to type labs vertex animation textures. I just realized that I, I pronounced it incorrectly throughout the whole video. So yeah, and uh, under the mold, it will be a soft body. I have changed the end frame to 48 and changed the input geometry, which is basically this null, null node. And under the export, I have provided the path and everything else is by default. So then I hit render all. Once it's rendered, I have uh, imported all of the rendered data, like geometry uh, folder as well as the textures inside of Unreal. And then I have created a material for vertex textures. And this is how it looks like. I'm using the this node, which is this one, which comes from the side effects. And I will also add a video about side effects, explaining how to set up everything to have this node be inside of Unreal Engine. And I'm basically plugging all of the UV channels to corresponding sockets here, as well as the world position, normal, color, and uh, this is also, I haven't used them actually. And then I have created an instance. Oh, I can actually use roughness. Yeah. And uh, I have changed the uh, Houdini frames per second because uh, in Houdini I have rendered as uh, 24 frames per second. I have changed the playback speed. I have uh, checked the in frame interpolation and then I have added vertex textures here, which is this one. And then I assigned material to, the, to this geometry. Uh, and to, to assign material to this geometry, you need to create a material and just use a vertex color here and then plug it inside of this base color and you'll be, you'll be good to go. Because uh, otherwise, without this material, so if I remove it, it will be like so. And yeah, this is how you can do this type of simulation and render it inside of Unreal Engine. Hope you found it useful and if, if you have any questions, uh, drop a comment in the comment section and I will see you in the next video. Take care.